Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy a box of Double Masters 2022? There have been no shortage of product releases this year, but finally we approach a reprieve. This will be the last set released until Dominaria United drops in September. Now during that time we're gonna have something like half a dozen products released in the course of a week, but that's another video, or six videos. So until then, Double Masters 2022 is the return to the return to the master sets that were discontinued, well, really not that long ago. And just like last time, this Double Masters set asks the question, how can Wizards of the Coast wring the most possible money out of a universally beloved magic product, the reprint set. The concept of Double Masters is simple. As suggested by the name, booster packs of this set come with twice as many rares and or mythics as a typical set. And because of that, there are twice as many rares and or mythics in the card pool. Honestly, for as silly and on the nose as the product's name is, this decision makes quite a lot of sense for a reprint set. The vast majority of reprint demand is in the most expensive cards after all. So why pack a reprint set with the standard proportions of commons and uncommons when you could instead just cut to the chase and give the players what they really want? The result, a set with a metric ton of some of the strongest and most expensive cards in the game, and also a hefty stack of reprints nobody was asking for. Well, that's the result you get. Is it worth the price tag? Let's find out. But first, a word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Audible. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash Tolarian Community or text Tolarian Community to 500-500. Listen, being a reviewer of cardboard and cardboard accessories takes a lot of time. Those secret layers are not gonna alert themselves. That's why I love Audible, the premier audiobook service. As an Audible member, you will get one credit every month good for any title in the entire premium selection. And those titles are yours to keep forever in your Audible library. You'll also get full access to the Popular Plus catalog. It's filled with thousands and thousands of audiobooks, original entertainment, guided fitness and meditation, sleep tracks for better rest, and even podcasts, including ad-free versions, haha, <laughs> wouldn't that be nice, of your favorite shows and exclusive series. Ahem. <laughs> All are included with your membership so you can download and stream all you want. No credits needed there. Right now I'm really enjoying listening to Ben Yokoyama and the Cookie of Doom by Matthew Swanson with my son. This is a fantastic audiobook read by the author about a kid who discovers wisdom in fortune cookies and takes things way too far. It's hilarious and has some wonderful messages about friendship, empathy, and living each day to its fullest. My son has been listening to it on a loop and you can too. So if you'd like to try Audible as a new member, you can do so for free for 30 days on me. Start listening with that free 30-day Audible trial and get full access to thousands and thousands of all-you-can-listen audiobooks, original entertainment, and podcasts included in the Plus catalog. Visit audible.com slash Tolarian Community or text Tolarian Community to 500-500. Double Masters 2022 contains 332 unique cards, 331 of which are reprints, but for the first time in a master set history, there is one new card, Cryptic Spires. A build your own sort of dual land, especially designed for limited. Of the 331 reprints, 91 are commons, 80 are uncommons, 120 are rares, and 40 are mythics. There's a bit of a range in draft booster box pricing at the moment. I'm seeing this everywhere between $325 and the whopping $350. But as of the filming of this video, the prices do seem to be averaging out at about $335. We'll be using that price for this video. Of course, you should insert what boxes are going for near you and adjust accordingly. Now, individual packs are going for a little bit more, about $17 each, which is a whopping $4 increase from the original Double Masters packs. We knew that Wizards of the Coast would be raising the prices on their sealed product due to inflation, but this is a significant increase from what these packs used to cost. Without changing the actual contents or makeup of a Double Masters pack, the price here in 2022 for a single draft booster pack has gone up significantly. Draft booster boxes still contain 24 packs of 16 cards and a token. There are no set booster packs for Double Masters. 
Draft booster packs contain two rares or mythics, plus two traditional foil cards, which can be any rarity, including rare or mythic. That means you could theoretically crack up to four mythics in a pack, but you could also only get two dud rares, or I, I suppose two dud mythics. Well, we'll get to that. The rest of the assortment includes three uncommons, eight commons, one cryptic spires in each and every pack, as well as one token or add card. What's really odd about the lack of set booster Boosters. Well, there's a lot odd about it, but another thing that I haven't yet mentioned that's odd about it is that back when set booster packs came out and some people said, well, can't you just increase the number of rares within a draft booster pack? The response was, you couldn't do that. It would negatively affect draft. Well, here we actually have draft booster packs that have multiple rares up to four. And not only does it not negatively affect draft, the draft experience is actually really excellent. There are also collector booster boxes available for double masters, although they're not really boxes. They're not even called boxes. They're called collector booster displays. I guess even Wizards of the Coast realized it's disingenuous to call a product a box when that product contains fewer packs than what even a fat pack used to contain. That's right, these collector booster displays contained four packs and currently cost about $275 each four booster packs for $275. The rate for an individual collector booster pack isn't much better, as a single collector booster pack will run you $70. Each collector booster pack contains five traditional foil commons, two traditional foil uncommons, two non-foil borderless commons or uncommons, two traditional foil borderless commons or uncommons, one traditional foil rare or mythic, one non-foil borderless rare or mythic, one foil etched rare or mythic, and one traditional foil borderless rare or mythic or textured foil mythic. There are 80 borderless cards in Double Masters 2022, nine of which are commons, 21 of which are uncommons, 30 of which are rares, and 20 of which are mythic rares. These borderless cards exist in both draft and collector boosters and have an alternate art. In draft boosters, the commons and uncommons that can have borderless treatments will have them a third of of the time. That means that if you open a card that does sometimes come in a borderless treatment, then 33% of the time it will have a borderless treatment. So you got a 33% chance just getting these if you're doing draft boosters. Wow, those are a lot of numbers, but what exactly do they mean? Well, even English majors such as myself know, or especially English majors such as myself know, that $17 for a single booster pack is a lot of money. But we also know that two to four rares per pack is a lot for a draft booster pack. So the question is, how often are you getting your money's worth when you purchase a single draft booster pack? There are 27 cards in Double Masters 2022 that are worth the price of a draft booster pack alone. Among them, there's a huge discrepancy in price. Imperial Seal, which as of the filming of this video, Thursday, July 7th, has dropped as low as $254, is still the most valuable card in the set. That's followed by some other sweet pickups such as Ren and Six at $85, Dockside Extortionist, now only $69, nice, Cavern of Souls, Mana Vault, Warrior's Oath, Phyrexian Altar, all in the $50 range. And then at the bottom of that list, we have some neat cards like Crucible of Worlds, Seasoned Pyromancer, Thrumming Stone, Damnation, Aether Vile, and Commander Favorite, Ariella the War Leader, all in about the $20 or just a few bucks below $20 range. That is a lot of cards worth more more than a booster pack. But keep in mind, 18 of those 27 cards are mythics, which means your odds of getting one in a pack is lower than your odds of getting a rare. And also keep in mind that there are twice as many rares and mythics in this set as there normally are. With 120 rares and 40 mythics, that means 30 out of 160 potential rares and mythics, or 18.75% that you could open would be worth the price of the booster pack you paid for alone. Looking at it through that perspective does make the numbers a little bit less exciting, or they would make the numbers less exciting if you were only getting one rare per pack, but you're not, you're getting a guaranteed two with the potential of more.
So how many rares and mythics are worth half the price of a booster pack? There are 15 rares and mythics that are worth between $8.50 and $17. And again, going over this list from the top to the bottom, there are some real spicy cards here. Yes, a lot of this is commander playables, but there's also a lot of goodies that Modern likes. And this brings the grand total of cards that are worth opening from a financial perspective up to 42 out of 160, or just over 25%. This also leaves us with 17 of the total 40 mythic rare cards that are worth less than half the price of a booster pack. Obviously, opening one of those mythics will be a particular disappointment from a financial perspective, since wasting a mythic slot on a less valuable card is a real bummer when you've put so much money down on the price of one of these packs. The last factor when it comes to the value of a pack to consider is how many commons and uncommons are going to be worth money. I usually like to set that price threshold at about $2 for a common or uncommon. So looking at $2 as our threshold of note, we actually have seven cards that meet it, and six of them are uncommons. Shadowborn Apostle is the top of the list at $3.34 each. Thank you very much, Josh Lee Kwai. Lastly, the total value of a pack will sometimes get a boost from the two foils you'll open in every pack. But those two foils can be of any rarity and thus can't be relied upon to provide a value in the pack. It's a nice bonus if you get it. Keep in mind with all these numbers that this is the cost of these cards before the set has even been opened that much. Again, this is being recorded on Thursday, July 7th. A lot of these prices will fall as the set circulates more, which is good. And because there are so many valuable cards to be pulled, including the currently absurdly valued Imperial Seal, as well as modern staples like Renin Six and Force of Negation, you can expect this set to be opened a lot. Thank you, Wales. No, no, really, that's great for people just buying singles. So yeah, thank you, Wales. However, much like most Master sets, no, all Master sets, Double Masters 2022 is a limited print run. So there is a ceiling to how many of these cards can reach the open market. After a few months, Double Masters single prices will begin a steady climb back up. To get a sense of when that will be and what to expect as a whole for singles prices from Double Masters 2022, take a look at the trends from the previous Double Masters set. We'll be using the price history of Stoneforge Mystic, a historically expensive card that was reprinted in the original Double Masters. About a month before Double Masters released, a copy of Stoneforge Mystic from its original print set, Worldwake, would have gone for about $43. When Double Masters released, the Worldwake printing dropped about $5 to $38, and the price continued to decline for the remainder of 2020, bottoming out at about about $21. The Double Masters printing of Stoneforge Mystic began at $28 and by October had dropped to the low $20 range, where it remained steady until the World Wake printing joined it at that price in December. With the start of the new year, the price climbed back up and even shot as high as $80 in July of 2021 after the release of Modern Horizons 2, which made Modern Colossus Hammer a tier one deck in the format. Today, nearly two years after Double Masters released, both versions of Stoneforge Mystic once again sit at about $43. The price of the reprinted card is currently the same as that of the original printing a month before the release of Double Masters. Notably, the upward price climb took place just after Christmas, which makes sense if you think about it. There's a surge of initial product opening right when the set releases, and then there's another surge of product opening around the holidays since Sealed Magic product is a popular gift to give to Magic the Gathering players. After the holiday season, there's far less Double Masters being opened, and thus the supply of new cards entering the market dwindles to a slow trickle before drying up entirely. Now, this is just one card, but we can extrapolate a lot from this example for planning how and when to purchase cards from Double Masters 2022. You know, for those who wish to buy singles. We will likely see card prices decline over the first month or two after the set releases in July. We'll see them bottom out around the holidays, and then we'll see them climb back up as we enter 2023. Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, so is this set for drafting or just for reprints? There are a lot of excellent, sorely needed reprints in the rare and mythic slots in this set. There are also a lot of certified stinkers. 
Part of the issue at play here is that Double Masters 2022 was designed with two diametrically opposed goals, to bring card prices down by reprinting expensive staples and to create a fun, balanced draft environment. The reason these two goals are at odds is in order to have a good limited environment, you have to be careful what rarities you're putting various cards at. Take Lavalanche, for example. This card is an absolute beating in limited but it isn't playable in any constructed format. The card, therefore, is worth less than a dollar, but it's printed at the rare slot, because printing it at common or uncommon would be devastating for the Double Masters limited format. That means if you're opening this set for the thrill of cracking packs rather than the intention of playing a game of sealed or draft, you're going to be very disappointed, especially when one of the two rares you open is Lava Lanch. By my count, there are 17 mythics and 89 rares in the set that will be actively disappointing to open in a pack. These are mythics that are worth less than $8.50, or half the price of a pack, and rares that are worth less than $5. Of course, cards that feel bad to open are going to exist in every Magic the Gathering set. If every card in a set were valuable, then either no card in the set would be valuable, or more realistically, the set would be priced at such a premium that no one would be able to buy it. But the high number of feel-bads in this set, coupled with the already high price tag for a pack, means the risk in this set is higher than in most other sets. What's particularly frustrating about this is that the high-priced Draft Double Masters 2022 puts it out of the price range of many Magic the Gathering players. The cost of attending a pre-release for this set can range pretty widely, but many stores are beginning to price these events at the $50 to $60 range. That's simply not an entry fee that many players can stomach spending, and for good reason. What that leaves us with is a very fun draft environment, priced out of the range of many players, and at the expense of putting a lot of duds in the rare and mythic slots of this set. This might sound nitpicky, but there's a real possibility that when the dust settles on Double Masters 2022, the set won't have impacted card prices enough to make certain staples like Renin 6 or Duckside Extortionist actually affordable for many players. And if that's the case, what's the point of releasing a reprint set at all? If it's not going to lower prices and most people can't afford to draft it, why are we releasing it? Oh, that's right, because money! Final conclusion, no matter how you slice it, $17 for a single draft pack of Double Masters or $335 for 24 of them is a ton of money to spend on what is essentially a lottery ticket. Except instead of your lottery ticket potentially winning you thousands of dollars, you'll have to be happy if your gamble resulted in even just getting your money back. That said, there really are a lot of great reprints in this set, including some first ever reprints like Imperial Seal and Warrior's Oath. There's also a ton of awesome new alternate arts of some of your favorite cards. So while there really is a lot to love about this set, as a sealed product and in terms of value, I have my concerns. The high of opening a card worth $50 or more is going to be really high, but the low of spending $17 on a pack and opening rares like Hellkite Overlord and Hostage Taker is gonna feel really low. With all this in mind, I'm going to grade this set at a B plus. There are decisions I would have made differently myself, but there are also a lot of quality reprints of cards that have been out of reach for some time now. If you want some of these cards, however, I implore you, as always, to buy singles. Booster packs are for draft. This is literally the most expensive set of all time in terms of box and booster pack prices. Please, please do not throw away your parents' hard-earned money on a lottery ticket when you could spend your parents' money on something guaranteed to make you happy. But now I want to hear from you. Do you plan to buy Double Masters? Are you going to be able to draft it? Have you drafted it? What was that experience like? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, whether you're buying packs of Double Masters or the latest Magic the Gathering set, or just some accessories to put your cards in, when it is possible, when it is reasonable to do so, try and spend that money where you spend time playing this great game. And that is at your local game store. You're supporting your magic community. And hey, special thanks once again to sponsor of this video, Audible. Looking to be a new member? Well, you can try Audible for 30 days for free on me. Start listening with a free 30-day Audible trial and get full access to thousands and thousands of all-you-can-listen audiobooks, original entertainment, and podcasts included in the Plus catalog. Visit audible.com slash Tolarian Community or text Tolarian Community to 500-500. Thank you, Audible, for sponsoring this video.
Next time on Shuffle Up and Play. Ristic Studies, Spice 8 Rack. I've brought Popper decks. I will have you know that Spice 8 Rack is my favorite Magic the Gathering bread tuber. <laughs> because I be making that bread. Oh, so yeah, baby. baby! What are you fairy? Yeah, 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 we know all about it. Mm, what am I gonna do? You need land or something? I really need land. Super far behind here in this game, and I drew one of my best outs. Oh, one of my best <laughs> 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 <laughs>